Whenever you install a bit into the ShopBot, you need some way to communicate to the machine exactly where the tip of that bit is, since it will be at a slightly different depth each time you install it. You also need to tell it where your material starts, so that it knows exactly how far it has to travel in the z-axis to make the cuts at the depths that you're asking it to. You accomplish this calibration with this aluminum zeroing plate, also called a z-zero plate, and this alligator clip. This little operation will tell the machine exactly where the material begins and the bit ends. Now you have the option of creating this zero plane on the top of your material or the bottom. For now, we're going to zero off the top. First you place your material to be cut on the machine's bed and clamp it down securely using whatever hold down method you're going with. Next you lay the zero plate on top of your material after making sure that there's no dust or debris between the plate and your material. Also make sure that the plate is laying perfectly flat, otherwise it will calibrate improperly. As for where to place the plate on your material, you can either place it directly under the bit, or place it someplace convenient for you to reach, and then maneuver the bit over it using the control software. With the bit directly over the plate, we now attach the alligator clip to the collet nut. Then we hit the Z0 command on the software. The bit starts to dive. As soon as it touches the plate, an electrical circuit is completed, and this stops the diving motion. After that first dive in contact, it does a second, slower one for confirmation. The computer has now calculated exactly where that stop occurred, and then factored in the thickness of the zero plate, so now it knows exactly where your material starts, and exactly where the bit ends. Now the bit is zeroed in the z-axis, and we need to zero it in the x and y axes. That's a good deal more simple. All you do is click on this button in the software, and the machine will automatically zero the x and y axes for you. You can see here that I've raised the bit in the z-axis, so that as the spindle moves, the bit doesn't collide with the clamps that I have holding this workpiece down. Now what it's doing is driving the spindle over to the edge of the x and y axes until it hits the ShopBot's built-in proximity switches, at which point it stops. It does this twice in both x and y, and now it knows where zero is in those axes. While you'll need to re-zero the z-axis every time you change a bit, you don't have to re-zero the x and y every time.